In this installment of our Huntron Workstation series, we're going to cover test creation and scanning using a Huntron Tracker and Access Prober. Part of the robotic prober setup is doing a camera offset. However, for the sake of time, we will hold that process for another video. Once a board and sequence have been created, the process of using the prober starts with setting up alignment points on the circuit board. The alignment points are two points on the circuit board that the camera system uses for position correction from one board to the next. Normally we use points on the circuit board that do not change from one board to the next, such as vias and fiducial marks. Now we'll position our crosshairs on our mark, select alignment number one, and set the position. Notice how the alignment now changes to alignment number two. Using the directional travel arrows to move the camera crosshairs, we will now navigate to the opposite corner of the board and find our second alignment point. Again, we find a via that we can use as a suitable point for alignment number two, position our crosshairs on the center, and then we'll set that position. Clicking the Save button will store these alignment points for future use. We will now switch to the Image Pane, Image tab, and create a board overview image. We do this by defining two boundaries around the circuit board, one in the front left and the other in the back right. We will set our front left boundary a short distance from the corner of the board and then navigate to the back right corner of the board and establish that position. We click the set back right button and then click create image. And now the camera will step across the board and take snapshots which we will assemble to create our board overview image. Once all the snapshots are taken, the software assembles them into a board overview image. This image can be used to help navigate the camera around by simply clicking in the board image to move the camera to that position on the circuit board. Next, we will want to move to the component tab in the tree pane and add a couple of components to probe on our circuit board. We'll start by adding U31, which is a multi-package with 64 pins and a pin spacing of 15.8 mils. This will assist us in the teach process. We will also add D7, which is a three pin probe package. You can now see in our tree pane these two components created. The next step is now to move to the prober pane and the teach mode and actually use the camera to teach the location of these two components. You can use the board overview image that we just created to navigate the camera crosshairs to the components that we just created. We will undock the prober pane to make it larger and then select teach mode. This is where we actually teach the pin locations of the device. We'll start with pin number one and line our crosshairs up on that point. Pin 1 will be defined as the beginning of the row on this side of the chip. Then we move to the last pin of the row and set the pins in group, in this case being 16 pins on the side. The software does the rest and calculates the other pin positions. The software will automatically increment to the beginning of the next row, in this case pin number 17. We move the crosshairs to that pin, adjust it slightly, save it, and then again move to the last pin of the row and set the pins in group. We do this for each side of the device. Again, setting the beginning of the row, moving to the last pin of the row, and setting the pins in group.
When we are done teaching the last group of pins on the device, the crosshairs will move to pin number one. We will use the next component button to move to the next component in the tree, in this case being D7. Again, we'll use the board overview image to navigate the crosshairs of the camera to D7. You can click directly in the camera image to move the crosshairs to the first pin of the device, in this case being pin 1 of D7. We save that position. The pin automatically increments to pin number 2. We locate that position, save. Again, increments to pin number 3. Locate that position and click save. This component is now complete. The last step before scanning is teaching the height of the probe position. This will be the up and down position as the probe interfaces to the component. Displaying the probe tip camera in the live camera tab of the image pane is useful when teaching the height. In teach height, we will define a sequence up and a sequence down position. We will select a pin to use to define our up and down positions. Define a probe travel movement distance and then lower the pin down towards the board. We want to make sure that we have enough clearance above the board so when it moves between pins on the device that there's plenty of clearance. The sequence up is saved and then we lower the probe tip down to the board until we see a signature. We make sure we make good contact and then we save the sequence Z down position. This will be the down position for all the pins of the devices in the sequence. We are now ready to scan our sequence. The process is the same as shown in the other videos on Workstation. Select the scan tab, type in a serial number, and select our sequence above. Clicking the start button will execute our scan for us. In the live camera image, you notice the probe coming down to our device and capturing signatures from each pin. The speed of probing depends on several things, primarily the number of ranges used, but on average you're looking at one second per pin. When the prober is done scanning the first component, it moves to the next component in the sequence, in this case, D7, and probes each of the three pins. When the scan is completed, we see a failed indication because there are no reference signatures stored for these devices. You can look at the troubleshoot and review your signatures, and if you wish, set those signatures as a reference. That concludes this demonstration of the Huntron Workstation software with the Tracker and Prover.